I'm Kelly Coffey. I, uh, I hail from Queens. I now live in Massachusetts because, you know, mistakes were made. <laughs> I am, as Molly said, an ACSM certified personal trainer, uh, but I have not always been fit. I have been decidedly not that, but we'll get into that in a minute. So, <laughs> this, I, I, I'm trying something new with this presentation where I'm just doing visual cues for myself and I have to <laughs> laugh because I have a complicated relationship with that statue also. Uh, it's at Smith College where I went to college and where I spoke the first time I ever spoke in front of a crowd, which was about 10 years ago. The wellness director there brought me in and I had a crowd of probably about this many first year students listening to me speak at the library there. And I told my story. My story involved, you know, car chases and alcohol and drug abuse and morbid obesity and near-death experiences. And they're all like, you know, they're 17. They're really <laughs> smart. They come from privileged backgrounds. They ride horses. And they're like, oh my god. <laughs> she lived so dangerously, you know? <laughs> And I'm like, this is great. You know, I could tell just my most vanilla stories and they'd be like on the edge of their little seats. So I'm telling the story about how I was a college student, not recommended. And uh, while I was there, by the way, I transferred in. I went to community college first. I feel like that's important. Anyway, so I'm telling this story and I wrap it up and, and, and I open it up to questions. And one of these little girls in the front row, raises her, you know, eager little hand, and and uh, and she says, "Thank you so much for your talk. That was very enlightening." And I said, "Oh, you're welcome." And I was feeling all good about myself, and and she says, "I'm sure that you know that we are all going to die." And I was like, <laughs> "Yes, I mean, yes, I know that." She's like, "Yeah, we're all going to die. So what's the point?" of going out of your way to be well. And I was like, shit. <laughs> and I'm standing there, like I'm waiting for somebody to jump through a doorway and be like, punked, got you, just kidding. But they're all just like, yes, that's a good point, you know, in their little, <laughs> with their little smart, expectant faces, like, and you know, they're girls, so they feel sorry for me and they want to like rescue me, but there's nothing that they can do. And I'm just standing there and I'm like, God, what's the point? You know, why, why don't we just wake up and if you're me, go to Dunkin' Donuts and order two coffee rolls and eat them because they're delicious? Why don't you light a cigarette right after you kick one to the curb? Why not? Cigarettes are delicious. Why don't you start day drinking during the week because you want to, because life is stressful and alcohol takes the edge off? Why don't you? Why don't you do opiates? Because that's a nice feeling for some people. I get it. Not everybody. Like, why don't I, why don't I hook up with random strangers in parking lots? I like random strangers. <laughs> I like sex. I like it now. You know, why don't we do these things? And I'm standing there and I'm like, really? I'm stumped for a second <laughs> because I am a hedonist. I am a pleasure seeker. I want to feel as good as possible for as long as possible, as often as possible, without end. That is what I want. <clears throat> so I'm standing there. And I'm panicking. And, uh, but you know, I'm an ACSM certified professional personal trainer, so I know the answer, right? I'm like, well, when you're healthy, it's really much easier to do things like carry groceries and walk up and down stairs. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all like, mm hmm, you know, politely nodding. And I'm like, and unless you have a trust fund, Giving in to every whim and desire of your corporeal self is going to leave you homeless and smelling like shit. And, you know, it's going to be problematic. The outcomes will be problematic. And everybody sort of giggled. 
except for the kids with the trust funds. <laughs> so then I'm standing there, and I think to myself, oh, God, I know the answer to this question. I know the answer to this question. It's the first minute of the day. It's the first minute when I wake up and there are no distractions yet, and there's no abstract busyness yet, and it is just me having to come to terms with who I am and the choices that I have made and how I feel in my body and in my head and in my heart when I wake up in the morning. And it doesn't matter who I'm sleeping next to, because for a minute or two or three, all that really exists is me and my memories and my hopes and my fears and my dreams and whether or not I am living in line with the hopes that I have determines my emotional reality upon waking. <clears throat> the first minute. 